She's so fine. Hell of a hell of a blows my mind. Hell of a hell of a lights my day. What's good, guys? Today is Sunday, December the 20th, 2020. I wanted to do sort of an updated video regarding the credit card information that is contained in the Village of Rosemont's death investigation folder on Kanika Jenkins. Um, I previously did a video on it back in the summer. I think it was in June. And... When I started to go over the information, I just got one red flag after another red flag after another red flag, and um, I want to relook at that. Let's revisit that um, so that, because I was doing a lot of it as I was doing the video, but now that I've done a lot of the legwork on the front end, let's take a better look at it. Um, so that you can understand why it's throwing such red flags to me. All right. This is the document contained in the Village of Rosemont's file folder on the death investigation of Kanika Jenkins. Um, I wanted to look at this document first so that you can kind of see what threw the red flag to me. So they've highlighted, um, one, two, three. They've highlighted in yellow three charges from this, um, looks like a printout from TCF National Bank. They've highlighted that at the top in pink, a light pink. These three charges are highlighted in yellow, and the provisional credit is highlighted in a darker pink. I think it's probably supposed to be red, but regardless. Now, the first charge highlighted, it was initiated on 9-9, processed on 9-11, Crown Plaza, Chicago. It's supposed to be Chicago O'Hare, but they only have so many characters that they can fill there. The amount was $250. The next charge they have highlighted was initiated on 9-10, Processed on 912 for the Doubletree Hotel O. It's supposed to be O'Hare. The charge is $388.24. And the third charge was initiated on 910. Processed on 912. It is again for the Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare for $71.34. Okay. So when you add up $250 for the Crown Plaza charge, the first one, the second charge of $388.24 for the Doubletree Hotel, and then again the other $71.34 that was charged to the Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare, what you get is $709.58. Okay. One plus one always equals two. However, that's what they issued the credit in. So we've got 709.34 instead of 709.58. While that may not seem like a lot to people, you are talking about a mathematical error from a bank where they're issuing a credit. Okay, that's a difference of 24 cents. So they shorted him 24 cents on this provisional credit. That doesn't make any sense to me. That is a huge red flag. As I explained in my previous video, um, I worked for more years than I care to recall for an attorney's office downtown where I live. Um, there were two attorneys in the office. One was a practicing attorney. The other was semi-retired and would come in one day a week to handle his personal affairs. Um, and by personal affairs, I mean 
we traded stocks, uh, we handled mutual funds, we meaning me and him. Um, he had nine over $9 million when he passed away, and I managed that money down to the penny. I never once made a mistake with his bank account, nor did the bank, okay? <laughs> so, that's why I know that... Um, I'm just very familiar with financial financial institutions and how they operate. And um, somebody either didn't check the math here. Um, the paperwork is bogus, which is what I'm leaning towards. Something just does not add up about this, okay? So I, I did a screenshot of this uh, paperwork because... It's hard to maneuver around with it the way it is in the file. So I just did a screenshot. So, um, if you look here, it says the sex, okay, the name is uh, redacted. It's blacked out. The sex is male. The relationship is he is the sole owner of this account. The TIN number blanked out. Date of birth blanked out. Home phone number blanked out. CID blanked out. However, they have left his address. So his address is not redacted. Okay? So, of course, today when I'm poking around with this, um, I went to that address. Okay. So this, it pops up and immediately shows 2854 West Rosemont Avenue. Okay, the actual address is 2856 West Rosemont Avenue. However, if you scroll over here to the door of this building, the door says 2856-2854, okay? So this is the actual address. For the person who is listed as the sole account owner, for this account at TCF Bank, which doesn't make any sense to me at all, okay? So I went to Zillow. Um, it shows that this apartment building, it shows a bigger view of it. And so it's actually apartment one, which is a two bedroom, one, one bath apartment. It's not for sale. However, the value of the building is $136,720. That's the way it appears to me. I don't know. Uh, I would think it would be worth a lot more than that. So they may just be valuing the apartment itself. The rent would be $1,400 a month. Okay. I don't think there's... It just says multiple occupancy. Um, so it may be listing the entire apartment complex at that value. Um, so I don't know <laughs> where that address came from. Um, other than it's the owner of this account, which is so strange to me. And again, you can see it listed right here on this paperwork. It's a DDA slash savings general account screen is what this is. All right. They opened the account on July the 25th, 2014. So at the time of this, this account was a little over three years old. All right. Uh... One other thing that stood out here. It says, um, average ledger balances. All right. Late, day, that, blah, date of last deposit. 9-18-2017 in the amount of $1,000. Average ledger balances. The last 12 months, the average ledger balance was $1,769. Number of non-sufficient funds charged or slash UNC charged in the last 12 months. 
none restricted non-sufficient funds uncollected it doesn't list anything else there now we get to the interesting part this is a letter from TCF Bank and again I did a screenshot of it so that I could just maneuver around on the page and make it bigger it says September the 14th 2017 is the date uh, the name and address are redacted as you would expect them to be regarding your debit card fraud case file number 721954 reported on September the 8th 2017 that's interesting to me at your request we are investigating your case involving your account ending in redacted while we do this we are temporarily crediting your account as follows the amount seven hundred and nine dollars and thirty four cents date of adjustment 9 14 2017 and thirty seven dollars for service fee reversals because they charge $37 for a non-sufficient fund fee and the date of that adjustment was 9-14-2017. No later than December the 7th, 2017, we will send you a letter notifying you of the outcome of our investigation. Depending on our findings, the temporary credit may be made permanent or may be reversed. If you have questions regarding this letter, please contact us at blank, 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 blank. All right signed Renee Erickson electronic transaction dispute services okay so my question is this if in fact fraudulent activity was reported to TCF Bank on September the 8th 2017 how in the hell were they able to make the charge on 9 9 9 10 how did they process on 9-11 and 9-12? That's what I don't understand. Also, if they reported this card as having fraudulent activity, how was there a withdrawal made on 9-11? Or, I'm sorry, 9-9. A withdrawal of $400. It doesn't make sense. It does not make any sense to me. Also, then you go to this call center case number uh, page that has this pink highlighting on it. But if you, I've done a screenshot of this as well so that I can maneuver around. But if you go up to the very top left corner, you will see that it was reported on 9 8 9 17, 17 at 5 15 50 p.m. by Scott Tillizak. So not only was the fraudulent activity reported on 9 8, it was reported around 5 o'clock in the evening. The name is redacted, number redacted. Dispute type, unauthorized. Transaction total, $669.58. I'm not sure where that even comes from, that amount. Okay, I see where it comes from, but, it, but it's wrong. <laughs> It says permanent credit dispute history. No. Dispute type is blank. Dispute number 721954. Date of notice again highlighted 9 8 2017. Account type 152. Totally free checking. Actually wrote totally free checking. The card number is redacted. The branch and state 241 slash or dash Illinois date the account open 7 24 2015 it is a not tiered uh, on the interest rate dispute history no all right 
here's where the 669.58 comes into play. Keeping in mind that this was all reported on 9-8-2017. Okay. But we just read on the other form something different. On this other form, it's showing the first Crown Plaza charge initiated on 9-9 and the other two initiated on 9-10. Okay. However, on this form, it shows the transactions. The first one is from the Doubletree Hotel, O'Hare, Rosemont. Process date, hold on, initiated date, 9-7-2017. Process date, 9-8-2017. So which is it? Okay. There's the amount. There is some writing there. 389.24. I don't know if that's... 389 or actually 338.24. It's terrible writing nonetheless. Alright. The second charge, IHG, Rosemont. They haven't highlighted this charge, but it too was initiated on 97, processed on 98, in the amount of $321.34. And that comes from the two charges at the Crown Plaza added together, okay? The $250 and then the $71.34. That's where that comes from. Then you get down here and there's a charge for Barnes & Noble. New York, New York. Same dates, initiated on the 7th, processed on the 8th. $10.00. It says NP beside of it. So I don't know if that was a non-disputed charge or what. All right. It says, there's questions and responses at the bottom. Do you currently have possession of your card? Yes. How did you find out about the fraud on your account? Online review. So apparently they were looking at their account online, saw it, and that's when they called. Have you previously done business with this merchant, merchant or person who used this service system at any location or at any time use this ATM? This could include using your account or card number or writing a check. In for no. When what date did you first discover the fraudulent transactions? On 9-8-17. When and where was your last authorized transaction? 9-7-17. Where was your last authorized transaction? Apple iTunes. Have you given anyone else permission to use your card or account number? No. Is there someone you suspect might have taken or stolen your card? No. Have you received or responded to an email, text, phone call, or social media requesting account or card information? No. Have you filed a police report? Not applicable. I find that to be a very strange response. Now, this was printed according to the bottom of the form on the left also. On September the 11th, 2017, 7.24 a.m. And it says page one of one. Then they've included this transaction list in the case file. So I did a screenshot just so I can maneuver around on the screen like I need to. So if they're saying their last authorized charged, charge was Apple iTunes, we see it right there. It says 9-8-2017 in the date. It just says plainly date. 
the next charge, because you're going from the bottom to the top, would be a pay lease, web payments, lease or a loan, in the amount of 95 cents. I don't know what that's for, but that's a strange one. The next charge, going from the bottom to the top, 9-8 as well, is for CAS management, web payments, and categorized expense in the amount of $1,150. Now, that threw me for a loop the last time because I couldn't figure out what in the world that was. So this is Cast Management Services, Inc. This is their website, okay? They're based out of Chicago. So I went down here to searching for an apartment. trying to find something on Rosemont Street. Simply cannot find it. Typing in, you know, the numeric on the street here. Nothing. No matching listings found. Let's just search Illinois, Chicago, Illinois. The only thing it pulls up is Lakeshore Drive. Let's just try all and see if that helps. All right, that did a little better. Ridgeland, Cullum, Michigan, North Park, Huron, North Park. Maybe now I can go back up here and actually type in the address and see if it does anything different instead of having to scroll through all of these apartments. Let's try that. Hmm. It just simply will not pull it up. Um, I'm up to April of 2021. So this site's not really that helpful. Um, I'm just, I was just assuming that maybe, um, this cash management payment was for this person's rent and that maybe it was a uh, an automatic pay payment that came out on that date every single month I'm, I'm taking a big leap trying to say that we'll, we'll get back to this so if we know from the other papers that these charges were initiated on the 8th or the 9th it's got both dates listed. It's got the 7th listed on another one. On this paper, it's showing the 11th and 12th for those charges. So that's even more interesting. Because we know it's truly not those days. Those are the days they were processed. So, this transfer from, and there's an account number, it says transfer between accounts for $1,000. I mean, was that something that someone else did or was that something that the account owner did? And then you have the withdrawal for 400 Was that something that the account owner did or was that something that was done fraudulently? You have the purchase at Jewel for food. $130.79. You see where I'm going with this? 
it's just a little strange okay a little bit strange then we get into this Illinois electronic transaction dispute cover sheet and that's a whole a whole different animal altogether it's got redactions um, as you would guess they would be uh, date of notice 9-8-2017 written notice no provisional credit due date five to ten day, business days from the date of notice provisional credit yes given on the 14th of September card deactivated yes <laughs> dispute amount six hundred and sixty nine dollars and fifty eight cents branch number two hundred and forty one now that branch number I'll play the call where I called and actually figured out um, from the lady on the phone that that branch number is in Evanston Illinois which is nowhere near this nowhere near this it shows the service charge of $37 on here but what is so crazy about this form is that there are so literally so many misspellings on this form coming from a financial institution that I'm just not buying it I'm sorry I'm just not buying it one would think that this Illinois electronic transaction discover dispute cover sheet is a pre-printed form or at least a form that is saved in the computer system um, that can be typed on sort of like an, an Adobe PDF file that you can actually fill in the blanks on um, that, that may be taking a leap too far I don't know but I just know that as a professional person there's no way in hell I would ever let this form go out of the door of my business and I will show you why I have circled the misspellings on the actual form these are not answers to the questions these are actually words that were misspelled on the form itself they did not have a clue how to spell provisional did not have a clue didn't know how to spell the word assessed either a bank now at the bottom it says additional trans or manual setup 9 12 2017 KN entry mode 06 ECI 07 card not L slash S no declines card deactivated no priors no fees customer since 3 of 2013 A little strange there um, they could have had a different type of account but it just is a little strange because I know when I set up my checking account um, the date my account opened is the date I became a customer at that bank so they would be the same dates so this person must have had some type of other account with them customer rating six issuing provisional credit in the amount of seven hundred and nine dollars and thirty four cents instead of seven hundred and nine dollars and fifty eight cents send to CLR 9 14 2017 NWJ it says loss type CFT and it's hard to see through that part but it says Rosemont Illinois all right so just the form itself is suspicious to me because I have never known a bank to send out anything that looked this ridiculous okay then go back to the call center case number uh, document and the bottom of it has misspellings as well 
they've misspelled authorized on here and this is in the questions and responses section it goes from one it's numbered one two two underscore one three four four underscore one seven nine ten and eleven I find that to be very strange why would they remove questions from a form you would normally just put an NA and go on about your business but no not in this case and a two underscore one a four underscore one why wouldn't you just put 2.1 or make that question three or make that question five see what I'm saying very very strange very strange very strange document and this came from the bank TCF Bank okay when you call the 800 number to TCF Bank you get the call center and what I'm gonna do is just play a few pertinent parts of the calls that I made regarding this information and then I'm gonna end the video but I just wanted you guys to see why I cannot let this credit card information go because it's something is not right something is just not right and it's right in our face um, I'm gonna do a separate video regarding the two people that signed these documents uh, because that will be interesting as well so I'm gonna play these calls now okay so then I call back and I actually get someone who is very helpful um, who kind of gives me some general information that I was wanting to know regarding the account type specifically about this totally free checking that appears on the paperwork thank you for calling TCF Bank my name is Sophia can I have your name and account number please um, I, I'm actually just calling to get some general information about the uh, free checking Oh, yeah, I can help you with that. What is your, what, where you look, what's the information? Well, I just had a question. Um, there's absolutely no fees, correct? Uh, well, there, so the, we do have a disclosure there. Uh, other fees may apply. Are you on our website right now? Um, I have been. Okay, so there are no monthly maintenance fees. Okay. It's a $25 minimum opening deposit, but we don't require you to have, like, a minimum balance. But there are certain fees, like with any other account, um, that you could incur, like overdraft fees or a returned item fees. Okay. Or your account. So for <laughs> active accounts that aren't negative. Mm -hmm. There are no fees in regards to servicing that account, but if you, like, go to an ATM that's not a TCF ATM, mm -hmm. or if you request paper statements, or if you order checks, like, some of the options, and, you know, other optional services, then, mm -hmm. yeah, there are some. That's what I was actually going to ask. Um, well, two of the things you just hit on. <laughs> um, how much is your return check fee or non-sufficient fund fee? So, when you have... A check that you deposit in their earned funds, I think that was $20. So if, you, if someone wrote you a check that, you know, turned out to be not a, not a good check, mm -hmm. you had deposited it, that's $20. Okay. What if I went over uh, on my balance or something like that? Sure. So if you overdo your account or paid, you know, made a payment to someone you didn't have the funds, we charge a $37 fee for that. Okay, and then um, I can use that ATM card at any ATM, even though a fee may apply. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right, and are these, um, is the free checking, is that any kind of interest-bearing account? No, that one does not. Okay. And I'm trying to think if I have any more questions. Uh, let's say, um, I know a good common question. Uh, what, ha what would happen if, say, because um, you never know, if my debit card, if somebody got the number, what, what would happen then? How would you guys handle that? Well, 
if I had like a lost or stolen or even fraudulent charges? How do you guys handle those? We would do a dispute, so that's an investigation of the charges. Okay. Um, we would cancel your card to prevent any further. Okay. Okay. All right, so you would cancel the card and we would do a dispute and go from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, that's all I have. Okay, dear. Um, if you think of anything else, feel free to give us a call. Okay. Or you can visit our website. Um, there's a lot of information there. Well, I do have one more thing. If you got, oh, yeah. if we did do, like, say that did happen, um, obviously I've had this happen to me in the past. That's why I'm asking. Um, yeah. Would that be handled in house, or do you have like a call center that you guys go through, or how does that work? Where is the call? Center? You have a call center. Okay. This is us. You would just call us with the number and. We would help you here. You could go to a branch. You know, hopefully they'll be open soon where you can just walk in there freely. Like, <laughs> right. So right. can help you there, too. Okay. But you do have a call center as well. This is the call center, dear. You're calling it. Oh, okay. You're calling it right okay. now. Good deal. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that's it. That's all I got. All right. Well, thanks for giving us a call today. I hope you have a good day. Thanks. You, too. So I'm going to end the video here, um, but I am going to do a separate video regarding uh, some more on this credit card fraud case. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I know it's lengthy, but it's so worth it because if you follow the money, that's what they always say, follow the money. So um, regardless, you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. So this is from my previous video, uh, checking out the credit card quote, fraud case, and I'm just going to play the pertinent parts of the call. Can you transfer me to that um, electronic dispute department? Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, but we can't be able to do that. So who can... Uh, they're actually not taking phone calls. Okay. Can someone verify that this person is actually a legit person? <laughs> Because this paperwork has misspellings all over it, and I just find it hard to believe that it is a actual document from a company. And I don't want her to reply back to it if it's not something that is legit. If it's a scam, in other words. Well, actually, ma'am, uh, if you actually have at least the location of the branch that you're looking for, or at least... See what I'm talking about? It's a bad language barrier. And it's very frustrating, and it happens often. Our zip code, we can be able to track that branch. And if you have a further concern, I could be able to provide you their number for you to be able to make an appointment to them. Well, it says on this work, it says uh, by Scott Telezek, I can spell the name, and it says call center case number. And it has a case number, and then it says Branch 241 in Illinois. <laughs> That's why it's so strange to me. Do you all have a call center that handles your uh, credit card or debit card disputes? Uh, if that is, ma'am, a debit card dispute, uh, you're actually... Um you're actually speaking with the right department. Uh, we are actually on the Connex Center. It's just that, ma'am, for us or uh, for us to be able to fully, uh, fully like assist you and to fully check uh, the informations on your uh, uh, and your concerns as well, uh, we might actually need to pull up. Uh, an account if you have an account with us ma'am so that we can be able to help you out further no i, I don't want to give her account information that's i don't need anything specific relating to her account i just want to make sure that this this actually exists <laughs> because she's going to do her paperwork but i don't want her to complete this paperwork if this person is not a real person <laughs> because there are misspellings all over this document and I just don't think that it came from an actual bank. She's elderly. 
you can't verify the employees? Or you can't verify? No, no, ma'am. You can't verify that you use a call center for a debit card dispute? That would be pretty easy. To I can be able to check that, ma'am. It's just that, ma'am, like what I said, for me to be able to further check it, uh, I need to pull up any account well, so I can be able can to further it. look it out. Oh my gosh. I can tell you what kind of account she has. She has a totally free checking is what it says. Account type 152. Does that sound familiar? Yes, ma'am, it sounds familiar. It's just that, ma'am, uh, like what I said earlier, I'm really sorry for that, ma'am. But for me to be able to look it out. Can I speak to someone else, please? I'm sorry. By this point, I'm starting to lose my shit with her. I think there's a barrier. <laughs> Okay, sure, ma'am. Let me just try to transfer you to one of our team leads, okay? Thank just you. Stay out the line. Thank you. Uh, but may I know as well? Hello? Yes. I Hello, Ms. Karen. Uh, hi, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for patiently waiting. So I already have here uh, Ms. Ananza, one of our team leads. Thank you could be able to talk to her. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I just want to write before proceeding that the call may be monitored or recorded for quality assurance and training. That's perfect. I understand that the, uh, I'm not speaking with the account holders, but I understand. Is that correct? No, but I have a very simple question. <laughs> This is so simple. Okay, and I want to help you the best I can um, without an account or card number. Is it is going to be general, uh, and it, it may not pertain to your situation, so I will do the best that I can. Very simple. Do you know what branch? What would that question be? Branch number 241 for TCF Bank. Do you know where that is? It is on paperwork here, and I'm trying to figure out where it is. It says branch state. 241 slash Illinois, and I just want to know where that is. Okay, so I understand that I'm not just seeking information about a branch and wanting to know where it is in Illinois. Mm -hmm. And the branch that you're referring to is in Tyler Jalisco and happens to be on Howard Street. It's where? I'm sorry. 2485 Howard Street in Evanston, Illinois. Howard Street. Mm-hmm. Thank you so, so much. That was so difficult. 